the right honorable speaker of parliament, honorable Anita Annette among the chief justice of Uganda, the archbishop Bianco, the apostolic nonsho to Uganda, his grace Paulo Semogere, the archbishop of Kampala, and all archbishops, His Excellency Edward Sekandi, the former vice president of Uganda, and the special envoy to the president, all cabinet ministers, state ministers, the leader of opposition in parliament, colleague members of parliament, His Majesty Rukirabasaija Oyo Nyimba Kabambaiguru, the King of Toro, Right Reverend Kunewa, the Bishop of Fort Porto Diocese, and other bishops present, the hosting bishop, all political leaders, traditional leaders, ladies and gentlemen, before I read the president's speech, allow me to inform you that uh, as we are going on with prayers, there was a lot of noise and music around us. So I used my powers to stop them. And this will not happen again. People come here to pray, not to listen to music. And this nonsense will not, will not come again. Let me now go to the president's speech. A greetings, people of God. Congratulations on reaching the Matters Day of 2022. I thank you for the support you gave government during the time when we were fighting COVID-19, especially from the church leaders and you, the people of Uganda. The NRM government participated, supported the Matters Day for the first time in 1986. I did not remember still the Matters Day in that big way before, except the Pope visited Uganda in 1969. On that first celebration, I remember, you know, Tomuto of Rome representing the Pope, and both the Cardinal Rugambwa of Tanzania and our own Cardinal Subuga were there. Since that time, we made, we made it a public holiday. We also observed Nyerere Day on the fact of June. The Matters Day shows the resistance potential among the people of Uganda. These young people and some HD Ugandan is resisted resisted the ignorance and corruption of Kabaka Mwanga who was cruel fighting new ideas about God and society. Whatever views Mwanga had on the new religion, Christianity, and Islam. He should not have used violence, especially the violence of killing people whose results are irreversible. Once again, 
I want to inform you that once heads are cut, they do not grow again. Kushevuka. Mwanga's violence failed to stop the growth of Christian church and the Muslim faith. We praise God for that because the new religions were further classifying the principles of, go of good conduct in the human race. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. It says in the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 30 to 31. Even if you do not look at the other aspects emphasized by the new religions of life and death, this teaching was a good therapy for mankind. It castigated atheism, not believing in God, and selfishness. Mwanga should not have used the violence to oppose these new ideas for the betterment of society and the human race. It is good, therefore, that Christian and Muslim faith have grown in Uganda and Africa. Nevertheless, it is a betrayal of these very matters to get actors claiming to be believers, believing in and promoting sectarianism of religion, all tribe, all gender, all chosenism. What then happened to loving the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and loving your neighbor as yourself? In fact, soon after these martyrs were killed, in 1885-86, civil wars raged Uganda, mainly among the so-called believers backed by European teachers of these new religions, such as Heath, Taka, and others. Even when the civil wars ended, mistrust and the tension among these new believers went on manifesting itself in different forms, including in the form of the political parties that were sectarian until the NRM come, came to power on the scene in 1986. If you skip the period between 1965 and 1986 of the patriotic student movement, and the patriotic resistance fighting groups. Ladies and gentlemen, I salute Ugandans for enthusiastic receiving our message and lying around it. I also salute the religious faith for copying the example of the NRM and either creating or reinforcing the interreligious council. Thank you for gestioning the shameful, certainly unchristian, because on that I am sure of, but hopeful, also an Islamic practice of sectarianism that had turned the new believers, the faith for which martyrs died, into hypocrites. One thing and doing 
totally a different thing in practice. Ever since the Ugandans read around the message of NRM of down with sectarianism, we have also been giving them another message, also in the Bible. This, this is the parable of the terrence, the master that has left the terrence with his servants. Praise the one that had multiplied the terrence and cast out the ones that had lost all, not multiplied the terrence into them. This is in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. The NRM has been calling on Ugandans and all families, the nine million of them, especially with agricultural land, to use these talents not for the sake of the master, but for your sake, to get out of poverty by the understanding either all or some of the following activities. Coffee, fruits, zero grazing, poultry, pigs, if you are not a Muslim, or a traditional Munyankore fish farm. If you are on a plain area, or eater, and the food production, bananas, cassava, Irish potatoes, etc. If your family has got only four acres or less, we call this intensive agriculture. Using a small area to get high returns. The country, however, also needs extensive agriculture so as to produce lower priced commodities such as sugar, sugar cane, cotton, tea, tobacco, etc. That are, in some cases, even indispensable for intensive agriculture, such as animal feeds, for instance. Therefore, all the families of the believers that have land for agriculture, big or small, must take part in this campaign of enlightenment, of chasing poverty from homes, especially under parish development model. With regard, with regard to the families who may not have land for agriculture, all have no interest in agriculture. They can look at a mioga, all work in the factories, or work with the services. For example, transport, banks, hotels, etc. All in ICT. Otherwise, the question then is, how are you different from the pagans that still believe in idols? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It says in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Elsewhere in the book of Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 to 20. It says, do you know, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you have received from God? Are you not your, you are not on your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You can, you can, our bodies can be the temple of the Lord if they are full of sin. 
disease, hunger, improperly closed. We shall know them by their fruits. It says in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 16 to 23. Countries like the USA were modernized by some of the Christian groups. Let the, believe, let the believers in Uganda prove that they can historically add value to Uganda in terms of wealth and people's prosperity. Coincidentally, six days from today, on the 9th of June 2022, we shall be celebrating the 41st Heroes Day. On the 9th of June 1981, in Chikandwa village, nine NRM supporters, led by Edidian Lutamaguzi, were cut with pangas by Basri Okero. However, they, like the martyrs of Bo they like the martyrs of 1986, refused to reveal the location of the small unit of NRA fighters led by Jack Muchunuguzi that was hiding nearby. It is this heroism deep in the chest of Ugandans that we should use to modernize Uganda. The killers of Chikandwa 9 in the end paid a heavy price and they were defeated. The NRA won a total victory in 1986 on the 26th of January uh, 1986. I thank you fellow Ugandans I wish everybody a happy and safe Mother's Day for God and my country.